So one of your biggest jobs with this, um, this whole assignment is going to be like manipulating the images and getting them to line up and look good together and that sort of thing. And um, <clears throat> I showed you a little bit yesterday about how you can go into Photoshop and edit them. So, you know, I could, this, this nail isn't quite where I'd want it to be. I can move it over, that sort of thing. One of the other things that you can do, and I showed you this yesterday too, is you can click on it and you can slide things side to side, okay? Um, you can use the white arrow tool, which is over here, or you can, uh, and then that will select the photograph inside. Or if you're using the black arrow tool, you just need to go over the center, and then you'll get the little hand. That was something that I, I, I wanted to, to show you. you. Click on the hand, and then you get this. If you don't click on the hand, then you're actually going to move the frame. So you got to be careful with that, okay? When you've got the black, the selection tool, the black arrow tool, um, once you get the hand, you can move inside the frame. But if you've just clicked on the on the frame itself, on the side, on the uh, around the edges, then you're moving the frame. But if you get in the center, then you click. Now you move the photograph in the middle. It gets a little confusing at first, but you get used to it really fast. Um, <clears throat> as I was looking at your photographs, a lot of images uh, as they were shot. I thought, oh, you know what? It'd be really stronger if the person flipped the photograph, okay? Just took it and flipped it backwards. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple considerations to that. Number one, does the photograph have text in it? If your photograph has writing in it, text, then it's probably not a good idea to flip it because it'll be obvious, right? Because now the letters are backwards. Um, <clears throat> however, in this case, with these two photographs, I can flip these two and, and, and uh, totally have, you know, uh, no problems. Nobody will ever know. And no problems with, uh, with that. And the cool thing is I don't even have to go into Photoshop to do this. Um, <clears throat> so I can just click on the image here, and then I can right-click on it. And then in the drop-down, you'll see this little menu here. It says Transform. And this is really cool. I can rotate. I can she do shearing, which is like perspective effects. Um, <clears throat> or I can flip horizontally or flip vertically. Um, so it's really cool. I mean, rotating can be very, very ha handy. And then you can actually type in an angle. Um, or better than that, if you wanted to rotate in the frame, right over here, there's a rotate tool. See? So I click on that. And then I can actually rotate things a little bit in side the frame, which is really cool. Notice that I've got a little crosshairs up here. Okay, so I can take that crosshairs down and um, set that maybe in the center a little bit more. There, it kind of snaps to the center. Um, and now I can rotate it. Now obviously when you rotate, if you're going to do that, you'll start getting these empty corners. So what do you think I have to do now to hide those? Hmm? I could go in and make a black background, but that's not going to help me here or here. What I really need to do is just scale up, crop essentially. So I can take the white arrow tool and scale up. Hold the option key down and it scales from the center. Just scale until you've covered the corners. Okay. Now you don't want to scale too much, obviously, because as you zoom in, you're going to lose some quality. You're going to lose some resolution, but that's close enough. Um, let me undo those, okay? But really, you can do a lot of manipulation with your photographs in InDesign that you, so you don't have to go into Photoshop. So that was something I didn't show you yesterday I thought was important. So if I wanted to um, go and flip them, so I go Transform, Flip Horizontal, voila, okay? Um, or Flip Vertically, Transform, Flip Vertical, does that. So then I could go to this. Transform, flip vertical. Whoops. <clears throat> now, I'm uh, not quite sure what happened there. Let's try this again. Transform, flip vertical. That's very interesting. It's flipping out of the frame. Instead of trying to figure out why it's doing that, I'm going to just move it down with the cursor keys really quickly so I can grab it and just bring it back down. Now, what's interesting is now the photograph has a completely different graphic feel, doesn't it, than it did before. And it's not as successful in my mind. And there's a major reason why. Anybody want to know, uh, or anybody want to take a guess as to why it's not as successful now? 
Well, that's a good point. Icicles don't go that way. I could flip the whole thing. Well, I mean, watch this. So, I mean, again, there's no end to what you can do. I just take the black arrow tool, take the whole thing. Whoops. Take the whole thing. I'll just use the rotate tool because that's just the easiest. And I'm just going to rotate them all. Whoa. Got to set the crosshairs in the center here. Now I can rotate them just like that. I could have flipped them. I, whatever. See if that works. Transform, flip, vertical. Yeah, there you go. So that would have worked too. <clears throat> so now the icicles are back into their regular orientation. However, I think this still doesn't work very well. <clears throat> and the major reason is they don't match up because of the difference in thicknesses here. I mean, do you see that? I mean, it's you just the, the nail is not the same thickness. And here, same thing. So, you know, and then these are slightly off. This is the only one that really works, isn't it? You know, because the thicknesses are the same here. Um, so in a lot of ways, oh boy, in a lot of ways, you know, sometimes you can get yourself in trouble by trying to edit too much, okay? But um, it's definitely one of those things where this is a better image here, anyway. But all I wanted to show you is you can do things like rotate, zoom in on an image, uh, crop, um, and, and flip things in InDesign. So you don't need to do those things in Photoshop or in Camera Raw. So as I said before, as, when this assignment was, was starting up, when you guys brought your images in first, okay, last week, I don't want you doing any cropping in Camera Raw for this assignment, none whatsoever. All your cropping should happen in InDesign. It just gives you the most amount of flexibility, okay? You can go in, you won't make any major mistakes. You can always, you know, if I zoom in too much and I realize that, okay? And I, oh, and that doesn't work, okay? I don't have to go back and reset my image. I don't have to go back to the original camera raw or anything like that. I can just shrink it back down again. So you, you definitely have the, the, most, the most flexibility when you're working with the images as much in InDesign as possible and, and editing, editing them as little as possible when it comes to Photoshop and Camera Raw. Unless it's things like the clone tool and stuff like that that you can't do in InDesign, but for positioning, zooming, uh, rotating, flipping, all that sort of stuff, you don't need to do that in Photoshop, okay? So when you see on your, um, uh, on your contact sheets that says flip, or this should be over here, or something like that, don't think you have to go running back into Photoshop to do that immediately. You can just do it here in InDesign. Any questions? Nope. Okay.